clearly state your concerns about the destructive or disrespectful aspects of the specific ongoing behavior and make a specific request for change. Underline, circle, specific. Because women are so vague. Have you ever noticed that? Now, amongst ourselves, woman to woman, that will work probably okay because we read between the lines. We understand the hints. We kind of get it. But a man, unless you spell it out, doesn't really know what you're talking about. <laughs> so you have to be like specific. If you just say, oh, I'm kind of worried about the amount you're drinking. Can you kind of do something about that? And they're like, okay, sure. And so they drink a different kind of beer. <laughs> I made some changes. Like, no, you gotta be specific. Like, specific. what are you even talking about? What are you asking for? You gotta be specific, right? So, be specific. Je Jesus makes it clear in Matthew 18, verse 15, that if a person is sinning against you, the first step is pointing out the offense to the person who has caused harm. And the verse is, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault just between the two of you if he listens to you you've won your brother over uh, but but basically you're supposed to go just to him not gossip to 12 other people first but to him ask for the change tell him what the problem is and if he listens great you've won your brother over so you this is biblical to confront when someone's sinning against you i would definitely avoid using the word addiction at least in the initial conversation I would avoid using that word because doesn't that just sound ugh, kind of judgmental, condemning, and ugly? So why throw out that word if you don't have to? Why say, I think you're an alcoholic? Well, I mean, that is going to probably just like push him back. Why say, I think you have a huge addiction? Probably just not the best choice of words. I would avoid that. But you can still be clear about whatever the problem is. Uh, you might choose words like, I'm concerned about and then make your request for whatever the change is. Don't drop subtle hints. Again, men do not pick up our woman hints. But don't give a 20 minute lecture either because his eyes will glaze over and he'll be thinking about ESPN or something uh, while you're just going rah, 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 and all he hears is rah, 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 right? Be clear and be brief and to the point. Since most men need time to process their thoughts and feelings, make sure you give your husband some time to think about your request. Men need time to think about these things. So don't get into a big back and forth argument about it. You just say, well, I'll give some examples here in a second, but don't, don't like press him to say, right? Are you gonna do it right now? Are you gonna make this change? Are you gonna do it? Are you gonna do it? And he's like gonna start getting really defensive. But if you can kind of give him some time to think about it, gonna probably 10 to one work much more effectively. So let me give you an example. So let's say it has to do with um, drinking. So you might say, Babe, I know you love me and the kids and you would never do anything to hurt me intentionally. See how that's a good start? That's a super good start, by the way, to say, I know you love me and, and the kids or you know, whatever, if, you're married, if you have kids. And I know you would never do anything to hurt me intentionally. Now see, when you start like that, he's already like thinking you're not against him. You actually see good in him. You actually believe that he has a good heart much more effective start to any conversation. And then you say, but I've noticed that you're getting drunk more and more often and it's changing your behavior. I'm concerned you're using alcohol in a really unhealthy way. So I'm asking you to please stop drinking entirely, at least here at home. I don't want you to respond, respond right now. Just please think about what I said, pray about it, and let's talk about it again tomorrow. I don't want you to respond right now, just pray about it. He's gonna feel like, okay, I don't have to respond right now. I don't have to get defensive and angry or anything because I don't even have to talk about it right now. And I can guarantee you, he will think about this. And it'll probably go much better if you give him until tomorrow to think about it, to pray about it, to process what you've been talking about, right? Uh, let me give you another example. Uh, let's say this one is about pornography because that's such a common concern right now. Honey, I know you love me and you would never do anything to hurt me. But I can see you've been looking at pornography. That really hurts my feelings. It makes me feel like I'm not enough for you. I'm asking you to completely stop looking at porn, completely. And if you need help breaking free of it, because this is so hard to break free of this thing, let's work on it together. I'm for you. We're gonna brainstorm on this together. Would you just think about this and let's talk about it again tomorrow, but I really, really wanna work with you on this because I know it can really get a hold of you. It gets a hold of so many men. 
but let's work on this thing together. Let's think about it, think about it, let's talk about it again tomorrow. That kind of approach is probably going to work a whole lot better. So when you revisit this conversation, because remember you were asking him to think about it and pray about it, you're going to talk about it tomorrow, well now it's tomorrow, right? So you're revisiting the conversation. Ask your husband if he's willing to do whatever it takes to end the behavior. This is a key piece. Are you willing to do whatever it takes to stop this? To stop looking at pornography, to stop drinking alcohol, to stop using illegal drugs, to stop gambling, to stop verbally abusing me, you know, whatever the thing is. Are you willing to do, are you willing to do whatever it takes to end that behavior? Talk is cheap. Talk is cheap. Some people will say they're going to change something, but they never do anything to make the change. God tells us in Luke 3, verse 8, produce fruit in keeping with repentance. Now think about that verse. Produce fruit in keeping with repentance. So your husband or whoever you're confronting, your, your child, your dad, you know, whoever it is, if you're asking them to make a specific change, you're asking them, are you willing to do whatever it takes? And are you looking for like that fruit that demonstrates they're actually trying to do something about it? He needs to demonstrate that he's truly working on ending the addiction. So ask him what his action plan is. Ask him. Okay, so what's the plan? And if he looks at you like, you know, deer in the headlights, that's where you can say, well, let's talk about a plan. Let's come up with a plan. I want to work with you. I'm here for you. We're partners in this. Let's work on a plan together. Does that make sense? You're asking, what's the action plan? If he doesn't have one, you're saying, well, let's come up with a plan together. Overcoming an addiction almost always involves discovering the root cause of the behavior, right? The root cause of the behavior. And then realizing that true comfort comes from a closer relationship with Jesus, right? So again, brainstorm with your husband about the root cause. And this has made all the difference in the world. I can think of one particular relationship, uh, a couple that had uh, come to uh, Raul and I for a bit of counsel because the husband thought he had beat his porn addiction and it came back again. His wife found out, you know, they're on a whole trauma thing again because it's just happened again. And she's so mad at him. And they come to us for this counseling session. And all of a sudden it's like God just gave this thought find out the root cause of this behavior. And so we talked to them and said, have you guys ever sat down and tried to brainstorm what is the root cause of this? What is your trigger? And they were like, we never thought of that. And so we gave them that assignment. Go back and, and talk together and, and ask God to show you what is the trigger? What is causing you to default to this behavior? And it changed everything. It changed. They, they came back and said to us, oh my gosh, we, we just never looked at it from that perspective. She was just mad that he was doing this thing and hurt. And he was like, I can't stop. I don't know what the problem is. And she's mad that he won't stop. And he's like, I don't know what the problem is. I can't stop. And she's mad. And, that's, and that was the cycle. And you know, does that sound familiar? Like that's the cycle, right? And, and they never stopped and tried to work together and say, okay, What's causing this? Let's brainstorm. What's the trigger? And for him, it turned out, oddly enough, he was lonely, kind of like a deep loneliness inside. And it took him a long time to get to that because men don't normally, men often aren't as in touch with their feelings. And so to even come up with that took a while. But he was working long hours. He wasn't really connecting with his wife because he was working these really long hours. And for him, he just, he was self-soothing because he was kind of lonely inside. And once they figured that out and figured out some ways he could, you know, connect with her and everything, it solved that particular problem. I'm not saying that's the answer for everything, but they brainstormed, what is causing this thing? If your husband will not admit his destructive behavior or doesn't show any efforts to overcome the addiction, then that's when you bring the issue before a third party. And this is designed to put pressure on him. Loving pressure. It's called tough love, you know, putting pressure on him. The third party could be a pastor, it could be a counselor, it could be a mentor couple, it could be his parents, it could be his extended family, a full intervention, it could be any of those things. If your husband still won't stop the behavior, I mean, you've done everything, right? You've spoken to him kindly. You've let him know you're for him. You've confronted him. Confronted him. You've asked for the specific change. He wasn't listening. He's still doing it. He doesn't seem to be making any steps to, to change. You've brought in more people. He refused to even meet with those people. I mean, you've just done everything you can, right? If he won't 
Listen, have a more serious talk. This time, clearly define what your boundaries are and the consequences you will be forced to enforce if he continues. Because what other choice do you have? It's time for consequences. And this is the last part of Jesus' instructions in that Matthew 18 section of scripture. And that last verse, verse 17 says, if he still won't listen, treat him as you would a pagan or a tax collector. And again, back in the day that this was written, the Jewish people shunned pagans and tax collectors. They didn't eat with them. They separated themselves from them. And I believe Jesus is saying, if this person just stubbornly insists on continuing to sin against you, will not change, is not repentant, no one's been able to get through to them, at the end of the day, you might have to put some pretty serious consequences in place. Not out of revenge, not to hurt them, but to, again, try to force them to, 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 to come to Jesus, to have a come to Jesus moment, right? You're like putting that loving pressure on them. So let's go back to that previous scenario, scenario of the husband that was getting drunk all the time. Again, you've already talked to him, you've tried to bring other people in, he just won't change, he just won't change. And so maybe your final statement might go something like this as you're having this final talk about it. I love you, I want to build a wonderful life with you, but I won't stand by and watch you destroy yourself and our marriage and our family through your continuing to drink. So if you continue drinking like this and refuse to seek any help, I'm going to ask you to leave our home and decide if you really want to be part of our family or not. I'm not talking about divorce, not talking about divorce, but if you do this even one more time, come home drunk even one more time, I will ask you to move out until you decide to get serious help for this problem. I love you, I want our marriage to work, but this will not continue, and I will ask you to leave if this happens again. <laughs>